A handful of Ambazonians in the diaspora gathered in a seminar last Tuesday organized by Pathfinders for Peace to listen to presentations on the kind of referendum that can lead to independence, independence for Ambazonia, of course. For a full hour, Kati Colling, a conflict resolution expert, and professor at Georgetown University, alongside Professor Padraig O'Malley of the University of Massachusetts, a peace and reconciliation expert himself, all laid out the different scenarios, the different scenarios and different types of referendums with Ambazonia's conflict as case study. They all agreed that a referendum if the right process is followed, offers the easiest way to resolving the question of Ambazonia's sovereignty. But what type of referendum and how to go about it was where the problem lies. A referendum conducted by one side or one party in conflict may only help in informing the public and forming popular opinion. They said, it does not resolve the problem itself because, according to the experts, if the other side or party isn't involved and consents to it, the result has no bearing, no bearing on the party. The referendum that resolves the conflict must first be agreed upon by both parties in a pre-referendum arrangement or understanding. This protocol, the experts agreed, can resolve the cameroon Ambazonia conflict. A pre-arrangement or agreement is the key word here that I want you to take home. And it is important, according to the experts, because it predetermines how such a referendum will be organized, when it will be conducted, who qualifies to vote, and who conducts and supervises the referendum. In the case of a yes vote for Ambazonia's independence, what form of state for Ambazonia? And what currency and banking institution does a new country adopt? In the case of a yes vote, does Ambazonia have the capability of launching a currency on a national bank right, uh, right away? How about airports? How about electricity supply? Ambazonia will have to depend, still depend, on La Republic do Cameroon for quite some time before developing its own electric grid. And how about the national debt? the military, the police force, amongst others. The experts stated that these and other critical amenities and infrastructure would have to be settled in a pre-referendum agreement before a referendum can take place. A pre-referendum arrangement for these between the two, the two countries will provide a pathway for the aftermath of the referendum. The experts advise against Cameroon unilaterally calling for and organizing such a referendum. Neither should Ambazonians unilaterally conduct one. The argument was made that where Cameroon is allowed to conduct a referendum unilaterally, that, that means all by itself, it cannot be trusted owing to her history of electoral, electoral manipulation and rigging. Of course, Ambazonians would not accept a result that doesn't favor their stance in such a case. Perhaps what the presenters came across a little conflicting was the rule of the United Nations in such a referendum. They were very pessimistic. The United Nations would want to pressure Cameroon 
to yield to a referendum. As they advance the fact, the fact wrongly though, that precedents show the United Nations only engaging in referendums for independence where decolonization was the main problem. Of course, we know that the case of South Sudan had nothing to do with decolonization. South Sudan was always a part of Sudan. The case of Eritrea had nothing to do with decolonization also. And one can also add Angola too. For Ambazonia, the experts held that the Southern Cameroon's decolonization was over by virtue of the vote of 1961 to merge with Cameroon. Given this situation, the Southern Cameroons is considered, they said, part of Cameroon. So, according to the experts, the question of decolonization cannot be applied by the United Nations unless Ambazonians would have to return to the United Nations Decolonization Committee to retender an application for one. But this is what the experts seem to have sidelined or overlooked. Like the experts, Ambazonians agree that they are not going into any referendum where there is no pre-agreement or pre-arrangement with Cameroon as per its modalities and configuration of some of the concerns expressed. The Ambazonians also know that left to Cameroon alone, it will never, never, ever consent to any referendum. This is the reason why the emphasis is on a United Nations sponsored and supervised referendum. When Ambazonians talk about one, not just a referendum, but a United Nations supervised referendum. So far, Cameroon has walked away from two peace processes in Switzerland and in Canada. If the United Nations sees no need to engage Cameroon to a practical solution as easy as a referendum, it means, it means the United Nations just wants to aid and abate the impunity that Cameroon continues to perpetrate against another set of people who happen to be Ambazonians. The economic, social, and humanitarian situations on the ground continue to spiral down the drain as Cameroon soldiers maim and kill with impunity. Without any willingness on Cameroon's part to engage in a meaningful peace process, Ambazonians see no chance for Cameroon to resolve the conflict, which is why Ambazonians, Ambazonians continue to push the idea of a United Nations only sponsored and supervised referendum. Where Cameroon snaps all peace processes, a United Nations sponsored referendum remains the only mechanism through which it can be brought to the table. A pre referendum understanding reach, modalities agreed upon, and both parties commit to the outcome of such a referendum. Of course, we are not ignorant of the characteristic intransigence of Cameroon to getting engaged. In this case, the prescription will be as suggested by one of the experts. Get into the heartland of La Republique du Cameroon with fire power. But this is the recommendation. Get her citizens, Cameroon citizens, to feel the pain and agony just as much as Ambazonians do or have done. This is the expert. This, the expert said, can force the hands of both the United Nations and Cameroon to get engaged. If it is the only option we have, ladies and gentlemen, no choice but to do the unthinkable inside the Republic of Cameroon's territory.